You are about to hear a telephone conversation between a man and a woman about a rental property. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Central Realty, Jill speaking. How can I help you? Yes, hello, Jill. I've got a problem, a complaint I wish to register. Who should I speak to? You'll want to speak to Tracy, the residential manager. Just a moment, and I'll put you through. Thanks. Hello, this is Tracy. I understand your rent is going to be increased. Yes, this is why I'm calling. I was told that my rent would not be increased for the length of my six-month contract, which I signed only four months ago. What's going on? Is my landlord allowed to do this? I see. Yes. Okay. That seems strange. Look, can I take down some of your particulars, and I'll register a formal complaint to the landlord on your behalf? Yes, sure. That'd be good. Firstly, name and address, contact details. Yes, Jane McSweeney. That's M C S W E E N Y, three Mauger Street. That's M A U G H E R Street, Windoree, double three double five. And the phone there? Yes, you can contact me on double three four seven five six extension three one seven six. I generally arrive home by six o'clock in the evening, so you can call me around that time, but not after nine. Oh, sorry, eight thirty, because that's the time I leave for work. Okay, so I should note down that the problem is that your landlord wants to raise your rent. And when did you first move in? Yes, well, the contract began on August first, and oh, hang on, sorry, that's the ending date. We actually moved in on February the first. Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions eight to ten. Now listen carefully and answer questions eight to ten. Okay. Good. Now, if need be, you will have to send a letter to the Rental Tenancy Board. But as I said, first let us approach your landlord on your behalf and see if we can work out the problem before it gets to that situation. I'd be very surprised if you have to send a letter. Ninety-five percent of these kinds of problems get solved early on. Okay. Now, if you have any problems you need to discuss, feel free to come in and talk with the general manager. In the meantime, if you would just wait until we receive an answer from your landlord, we'll be able to then plan our next step. Is there anything else I could be doing? Well, you could write a letter to the RTB listing all the events as they happened, from your point of view. But as I say, hold on to it. Don't send it unless we have to. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for your call. I'm sure we can sort this out. Thanks very much for your help. I hope we can sort it out too. Bye for now. Yes, bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the tape. And answer questions eleven to fifteen.
Hi, I am your counsellor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually, there are games on the courts, but during league time, only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9am until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students. One additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight except for during testing periods when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a $1 fine per week that the book is overdue. I will repeat that. There is a hefty $1 fine per week. So it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it, plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please, enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with 200 computers for student use. They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one hour time slots. You may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a university student and a librarian about using the city archives. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Hello, I was wondering if you could give me some information about using the archives. I'd be happy to. Are you a resident of the city? Actually, I live just outside the city, but I study at the university downtown. That's fine. All you need to do is show your university identification card. And you can use the archives at no charge, as long as your ID card is current, of course. Yes, it's valid. So I don't have to pay anything. No, city residents pay an annual fee, but students can use the archives for free. Everyone else needs to get special permission from the director, but that doesn't apply to you, of course. Oh, good. I was also wondering about the schedule. I have classes every day, Monday through Friday. And I also have a part-time job, so I could really only use the archives on weekends. That's not a problem at all. We're open all weekend. Actually, the only day we're closed is Monday, so you can come any day, Tuesday through Sunday. Are you open in the evenings? Yes, we're open from nine thirty in the morning until eight thirty in the evening. That will fit my schedule well. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. Is there something else I can help you with? Yes, one thing I'll be needing to see for one of my class projects is old photographs. Do you have photographs of the city in the nineteenth century that I could look at? Yes, we store all the photographs in the basement. Those stairs over there will take you down to the photography collection. Just tell the librarian there what you're interested in. And he'll help you. Those would be nineteenth-century photographs. Yes, the entire collection is there. Now, if you're interested in seeing documents from the nineteenth century, those are right here on the ground floor. I would like to see some of those documents. Does that collection include newspapers too? No, all the newspapers from the earliest ones in the eighteenth century up to the current time are on the second floor. Here, let me just give you this map of the archives, and you'll be able to find whatever it is you need. Thank you. Oh, I see you have a whole room devoted to maps. Yes, on the third floor. That's great, because one thing I need to do is look at how the city has developed over time. I'm sure you'll find a lot of helpful information there. Of course, some of the maps are several centuries old. So generally, visitors are only allowed to see photographic reproductions of them. That shouldn't be a problem. What's this on the fourth floor, Ogden's Woolen Mill? As I'm sure you know, Ogden's Woolen Mill was the major entity responsible for the growth of this city in the 19th century. The Ogdeners gave money for the archives to devote an entire floor to information about the history of the mill. Will I be able to find information about the Ogden family there? Photographs, personal papers, things like that. Probably the family photographs are stored downstairs in the photography collection. The personal papers would be on the fifth floor, where we keep all the personal papers of famous residents of our city. 
Thank you so much for your help. I'll be able to do a lot of my research here. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation about using recorded delivery and registered post. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Tom, where are you going? To the post office. I'm going to send some packets to Leeds. Do you know the best way to send them? Well, if your need is for a record of posting and delivery rather than compensation for loss, recorded delivery is particularly suitable for sending documents and papers of little or no monetary value. Well, what can we send for recorded delivery? All kinds of inland postal packets, except parcels, airway and railway letters and parcels. The service does not apply to mail for the Irish Republic. I see. How do I post them? You should get a certificate of posting form from the container in the post office and follow the instructions shown on the reverse. The certificate will be your record of posting. Can I send anything in the post? No, you can't. You must not send banknotes, currency notes and some valuable things because there is no special handling in the post. Recorded delivery mail is carried with the ordinary unregistered post and there is no special security treatment. How do we use recorded delivery? Well, when your letter or packet is delivered, it is signed for by the recipient and a record is kept by the post office. The post office does not undertake to deliver recorded delivery or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by completing an advice of delivery form either at the time of posting or later. This form will be signed by a post office official, not by the addressee of the recipient. A fee is payable, which is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Is there any compensation for loss? Well, compensation is limited. Compensation may be paid for loss or damage, but will not be paid for money or any other inadmissible item. If you want a speedy service for articles of value with extra security of handling en route and wish to have compensation in the event of loss or damage, you should use registered post. What can we send if we use registered post? Any first-class letter or packet, except airway letter or railway letter. How do we post? I mean, what should we do? Well, you should make sure that the packet is made up in a strong cover and then it is fastened with wax, gum or other adhesive substance. Hand the packet to the post office counter clerk together with the cost of postage and the registration fee. Do not post it in the posting box. Make sure that the fee paid is adequate to cover the value of the content. The counter clerk will give you a certificate of posting 
which he has initiated with the date stamped. Is there any special security for the registered post? Yes, all registered mail receives special security treatment. Packing is very important because registration is not in itself a safeguard against damage. The contents of registered packets must be adequately packed. How do we pack then? Do we have to use special envelopes? Yes, you have to send the articles in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. These envelopes are already stamped for first-class postage and have the minimum registration fee. What about the compensation? Compensation will not be paid for the following articles, such as banknotes, currency notes, trading stamps, coupons, and some valuable things, unless they are enclosed in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. I see. How does it deliver? The recipient on delivery signs for your registered mail. The post office does not undertake to deliver registered or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by paying an additional fee and completing an advice of delivery form, either at the time of posting or later. If you require the recipient's signature on the advice of delivery, the form must be handed in at the time of posting. Otherwise, a post office official will sign the certificate. The advice of delivery fee is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Thank you very much for all this useful information. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Mm -hmm.